Income tax 2020 tax software example schedule C business use of your home come in relax with income tax 2020. Here we are in our Lacert Tax software. You don't need the Lacert Tax software to follow along, although I do believe they have a 30-day free trial. So if you can get access to the free trial or demo version of it, it might be a good tool to use. We're going to be focusing in here on the Form 1040, the related Schedule C, then the business use of the home, which will be Form 888. Two, nine. So back up to the 1040, we're going to be going back and forth from our data input to our forms, practicing different scenarios, the software making it easy to do so. Starting scenario is going to be our Eric Smith, our single filer living in Beverly Hills 90210. We have the starting off point being Schedule C income that's flowing into the first page, in essence, the net income on the Schedule C, in essence, flowing through being that 100,000 here on line eight. Then we have half of the self-employment tax uh, being deducted as above the line deduction. That's 7,065. They have the adjusted gross income then of the 92,935. Standard deduction, the 12,004. The qualified business income deduction at the 16,107 at this point. That's not where our focus will be. But then we have the 64,428 for the taxable income. That's our starting point. This information is flowing through from the Schedule C. So if we go on over to the Schedule C, we have the 125000 up top and then the 25000 as the other expenses. We're going to be looking at the business use of the home, which will flow in oftentimes from Form 8829. It will be dependent upon whether we use the simplified method or the actual method. So we'll start off with the actual method, then we'll go to a simplified method, and then we'll take a look at another uh, example possibly if we have time. So we're going to start off looking at the form 8829. We're going to be considering uh, the home office expenses. We'll use, like I say, an actual expense first. Then we'll take a look at the simplified method. Then we might take a look at a situation where someone owns the home as opposed to basically renting a home. And there's other scenarios such as daycare scenario or inventory that we won't get into at this time. If those are applicable to you, then you might want to do a little bit more research in on that because uh, there's some specialty areas related to them. From just a standard uh, logistical kind of standpoint in terms of preparing a tax return, if you get like an income statement from somebody and then you're going you're gonna to ask whether or not you know, they qualify, see if they qualify for a home office expense, if they have an income statement for a Schedule C business, when we have the income statement that we would then input here into the software, then we got to think, okay, is, is some of this stuff going to be home office type of expense stuff? Have they recorded it here? And do I need to make adjustments to it? For example, they might have something recorded on their income statement for the business income statement related to say utilities. And if the utilities is something that we're gonna to have to allocate out with the business use of the home, you wanna make sure that you're not double recording it, right? Because if they got utilities on their, on their income statement, then maybe you only get part of that utility. So then you gotta say, well, is that all of your utilities or is that just the part that you think is gonna be allocated to business? Uh, should, should that be there? Are we gonna use the business use of the home type of deduction to calculate something uh, like the utilities? Also, of course, if you think about some of the items that might be on a schedule A for a mortgage interest or property taxes and whatnot, if they own the home, then we gotta think about the allocation between possibly the home office usage and the allocation that might be still deductible on, say, uh, the Schedule A. Another common area might be like repairs and maintenance. So we might ask, well, repairs and maintenance, are you including repairs that are just on, say, a home office for repairs and maintenance? Are there repairs and maintenance on the whole home that we should be allocating in part to the home office? And if so, that we got to break that out and make sure that we're allocating the direct costs here and the indirect costs are going to be allocated out using our ratio method that we're going to be taking a look at. Okay, so then once we figure out that we have the home office, uh, then we can then we can kind of break out that information. And note, uh, if you're if you're working with someone that's doing bookkeeping and they have home office type of expenses, it, it might be easier to actually record them, you know, somewhere else rather than on the income statement that uh, that the business income statement, right? Because then you then you can add them into the home office expense as opposed to basically having to adjust them on this in on on the income statement or if they include it on the income statement that you're receiving and, the, and it's something that you're going to have to allocate out such as possibly utilities or repairs and whatnot you just want to be careful that you make an adjusting entry to do the proper uh, reconciliation of it we talk about kind of like a worksheet that you can use in, in other presentations that are more on a business side of things uh, we might go into that a little bit later 
but just note that uh, as you get to a more complicated returns where you're doing more adjustments to them, you probably want to get a more formal worksheet possibly in Excel uh, to record those and make sure that they are done quick correctly and that you can go back and figure out what you did in the event that an audit might take place at some point in the future. So now we're going to go back to the expenses for the business use of the home. We have the uh, part, part one part of your home used for business and then part new two where we figure the allowable deductions down below. So what we're going to do is basically go, we're going to go back in, let's jump into our data input, jump into the data input. And I'm going to say, let's use the actual method. So we'd have to say the business use of the home. So they'd have to measure out the business use of the, of the home that they are using. Let's say they're using something that's 500 square feet. And let's say the total area of the home was 1200 square feet. So that would be our ratio that we're going to be using 500 divided by 1200 would basically be the ratio total hours uh, facility used daycare facility only not for us here daycare is going to be a specialty area area of home included included above used exclusively for daycare not for us here uh, other income included on schedule d not for us and then we can decide here whether we're going to use the actual uh, expenses or elect to use the simplified method. Now we're going to start off with the actual expenses with the number one carryover, uh, carryover of operating expenses, no carryovers that we're going to have at this point in time. So then down below we have uh, the non-business portion will carry to schedule A if we go here. And this is going to be those items that could be on the schedule A. So if we own the home, and then we might have mortgage interest that we'd have to kind of break out between Schedule A and, and possibly the business use of the home. State uh, mortgage interest, real estate taxes is another big one that we might have to be breaking out. Qualified mortgage insurance. So those are the two big ones. Now, if you don't own the home but are renting the home, which is going to be our first situation, then we don't have that kind of breakout problem. We're just going to allocate part of the rent that we're paying to the, uh, to, to the, the business. So casualty losses, insurance, miscellaneous, we're going to say rent here. So let's pick up the rent. Let's say that we're, we have the rent. Let me pull up the trustee calculator and let's pay, let's say we're paying, you know, let's go with 1200 again, 1200 times 12, we'll say 14.4 for the rent for the year, 14.4 and then repairs and maintenance. Now, again, if we're up top, we're in the indirect expenses. So maybe I did some fixing of the, of the home or something here which costs like 2000 and then the utilities. This would be the utilities for the year. We're going to talk about all utilities because we're going to break it out with the proportion of the amount that should go to the home office. So I'm going to say utilities. How much do we pay for utility? Like 60 times 12, 720, let's say 720 and then expenses, interest, uh, state, state excise, real estate taxes, other indirect expenses so those are going to be some of the main ones you're probably going to have if you have rent as opposed to owning then you'll have the repairs if you have owning then you're going to have the allocation of some of these items up here which may not be as great because you might be able to deduct them already on on the schedule a but then we got like repairs and utilities and whatnot that should be items that you can allocate so anything that's basically you know on the house in general that you that you can then say applicable that should be applicable to part of the house that would be done for uh, uh, business use, you would think you would use that kind of breakout. Now you might have some direct expenses down here. So we might have say, say uh, repairs and maintenance. Maybe we painted the actual, the actual building. Uh, I mean the actual office space. <laughs> well, and if we painted the office space and it costs us like 200, then that should be applied. I know where that goes. I don't have to use a ratio to break that out because I painted the office, not the house. So I don't need to allocate it. I'm just going to put it directly there. And so that could be the case for repairs as well would often be the case as well. Now, depreciation isn't something we typically need to be thinking of with regards to depreciation on the home. If we don't own the, if we do not own the home, but instead are renting the home, which we're going to start off with our scenario being at this time. So then if I go back up top, I'll say, what's, what's it going to be calculating at this time? Okay. So now you see our calculation here. So let's just kind of break this down. I'll pull out the trusty calculator again, the huge calculator. It gets excited when I pull out the calculator. It gets all big giant calculator. So now we're going to say this is going to be 500 divided by the one, two, zero, zero. That's going to be our percent that we're using rounded here. So 41.67%. And that's going to be applied out to our indirect expenses down below. So our indirect expenses, we should be applying that out then. The 100,000 is what is what is uh, pulling over from our Schedule C. 
then we have the expenses up up here deductible mortgage real estate taxes and those would be the ones that would be kind of applicable between the schedule a and and this form if we had to allocate them out and then and notice here we got of course our direct expenses in column a indirect in column b so you'll see in for example the repairs and maintenance we put that 200 dollars directly here that one is just going to flow down directly we're not going to we're not going to multiply it by anything to add it up the items over here the rent the uh, repairs and maintenance that was on the house in general and the utilities are adding up to that 17 120 and those are going to be the items we're going to be picking up and saying okay so now we got these i got the 14400 plus 2000 plus 720 that's the 17 120 we're going to take that and multiply it times our percent our ratio 0.4167 and that's going to be the uh, 7134. And then we're going to take that 7134 and add to it the 200 direct. And that's going to be our 7334 that we're going to be uh, utilizing. Now, then we might have an AGI limitation and so on. And we're basically going to be pulling over that 7334. So then if I go to the 1040, uh, let's uh, schedule C, I should say, schedule C. Then down here, now we got the 100,000 and that 7334 that's all on one line item. Now it needs to be down here below. One reason they put it below here is because there's kind of an AGI or there's a limitation. There's a cap, meaning you can't bring your Schedule C income below zero with this. That's kind of why it's down below, which can be a little bit confusing because again, some of the items above utilities, for example, and the repairs and maintenance are kind of included in this number down here, but it's being allocated using a separate schedule that's basically flowing in uh, here. So that's going to be, you know, the general idea of it, the general idea of, of, the, of the method. And then, of course, the 92.6 would then go to the 1040 up top. So there we have this. Ultimately, it would go there, go to Schedule 1 and then the 1040. So then if I go back on over and say, now, what if... Uh, what, what if my, my deduction here was greater than my, my income, that 100,000, then I'd be limited to it. So just be aware that there's going to be that kind of a cap. It can't take you into the negative. You can have negative net income, but it can't be gotten to, you're not going to get an advantage or a deduction taking you into the negative from this deduction. So for example, if I said, okay, let's pretend this was like, the rent was like, uh, let's say let's say seventy thousand because we're living well and so then we got that and then i'm going to bring and then i'm going to say that our income though let's bring the income down and say not that income schedule c income and we'll bring it down by like uh sixty thousand so now let's go back on over. So now we're going to say that we had 40,000. That's going to be the 65 minus the 25 is going to be the 40,000. And then we still had the uh, 30,502 on the deduction. So let's make it a little bit lower. Let's say this was negative 75,000. And then go back on over. So now we've got 25,000 and it capped it at 25,000 now, right? So it didn't bring us into the negative is the point I'm trying to make a little bit, not very clearly, but that's what we're getting at here. So, so here it was adding up to the 35, 30,005, but then it capped us at the 25,000. So it capped it out there. Okay. So now let's go back on over and let's say, all right, well, let's bring it back up. Let's say, okay, let's bring it back, bring it back. And now let's say we use the simplified method. Let's say we're going to use the simplified method. And so I'm going to go back on over and say, now we want you to use the simplified method. And I'm just going to put a number two here, number two method. And so that means the business is 500 square feet times the rate, which I think is $5 is just what it's going to do, right? So that is what it's got here so if i go back here and it's just calc it doesn't need a separate calculation to do the to that method you just put it right here so there's the the home has a total of 1200 300 because it capped it right it capped it at 300 the, the business use so that's why in this case if we had 500 square feet we probably would not want to use the simplified method because it capped it at 300 times five and all the other stuff that we put in doesn't make any difference right it just capped it out but 
if you use the simplified method, you want to be careful that you're not double doubling up on the expenses. You still need to check. Did they include utilities here that we're kind of picking up with the home office kind of thing? Do we have repairs here that are kind of being picked up in the home office? The repairs on the home, in other words, that we should be using kind of our simplified method. Now, if we had something less than the 300 here, let's say that was uh, 200, then it would just take the 200 times 5, right? 200 times 5. So we could totally do that in our head, but I'm going to put it into the calculator just because, just because 200 times 5, and that's going to be our 1,000 here. So that's simply much more simplified calculation there. Now, what if we had like a, a, a home, our home that we owned, we didn't rent the home. Well, then you got this kind of interplay between the, the schedule A and this schedule. So we could then say, okay, well, what if I, let's put some home deductions on the schedule A like typical schedule a stuff so if someone has schedule a deduction then typically they got like interest so let's say they have interest of uh let's say fifteen thousand of interest let's say and then on the taxes they typically have real estate taxes so we'll say typically they have real estate taxes of uh let's say uh let's say seven five so let me see if I can memorize those numbers. So those were 15. I'm going to write them down in my little worksheet over here. So hold on, bear with me. 15,075. Okay. So then if we go back on up, now we could see that they are itemizing. So they're itemizing here. And so total itemized deductions are at the 23. 488 which are greater than the uh than the standard deduction so they're itemizing now if i go back to the home office then i'm going to say all right well home office uh we're going to go back let's put this back up to 500 now and now i'm going to go back to using the the first method because i have over 300 square feet so it would be better for me to use the actual method and i'm not going to have the rent anymore i might still have the repairs and the utilities here would be the same under the under whatever method but the rent would not be there but instead we'd have the items uh, that we'd have to kind of allocate possibly between schedule A and, uh, and, and our form here, our home office deduction. So here we'd have to say, okay, now I'm going to put the home interest here, 15,000, and then the real estate tax is 75. Now you got to be kind of careful on how the software is going to do it. I'm going to try to put it here and then remove it from where I had it before. So, and that and so the software will kind of allocate it out my hope is that that's what's going to happen so now i'm going to remove it from the schedule a data input screen like i'm going to take it out here and then hopefully it applies it out so there's nothing in the data input for schedule a which is kind of confusing but it should still like populate the amount that needs to be in schedule a here right it's taking the amount that's going to be there by by allocating it out so let's check that out by going first to the eight eight form 8829 so we've got form 8829 uh, and now we have the indirect expenses up top these are basically the ones that would be split between the schedule a and our form here so we got the 15 the 7005 for the interest and the real estate taxes adding up to the 22500 and then of course we took that 22500 22500 times the rate of 0. 0.4167 and that's giving us that 6376 and then we have the other expenses we put down below, the repairs that were indirect and the amount that was direct and the utilities having that amount. And, and that's going to add up then to, to the uh, 10,709. So the 10,709 is what is flowing then forward to the Schedule C. So we have the Schedule C, the 10,709. Now, now that means that if I go back to, if I go to the Schedule A, the thing that's confusing here is that now you look at the Schedule A and say, okay, wait a sec, there, now there's a something in the state taxes and there's something in interest but when i jump to the data input screen i might do a, like a jump thing here i might go in and say but let me check that out like in my my data input there's nothing there right there's nothing where did it where did that come from and that's because of course it we had to do this allocation where the, so, the software needs to in one place so that it can do the calculation and properly allocate between the two locations so basically if we if we think about it we're going to say well what happened here well we had the 15,000, so pull out the trustee calculator. We had the 15,000 times the percent, which is uh, times the 0.4167. And we were able to take 6,250 of it, 
minus the 15,000. So that means that 8,749 about, or 50, 8,750 about should be going to the schedule A. So 8,750 right there. And then on the, on the other side, we're going to say, okay, and then what happened with like the taxes? And on the taxes, we had the 7500 times the 0.4167. And that's how much we took basically here minus the 7500. So we get another 4375 about 4375 on the taxes side on the taxes. So there's the 4375. So it can be a little bit confusing to see that allocation between if you have a Schedule A, if they own the home, it can be a little bit more confusing. Now also note that if they own the home, you can do the depreciation on the home as well, which means you'd have to go back on in here and say, okay, now we're gonna go to depreciation on the home. And so we're gonna say this is on the home. And you probably want a better description than that, but like the address and whatnot. And then this needs to go to form business use of the home, 10. And then the activity is going to be one. And then the category, we're going to say this is building. Now we want the building, not the land here. Because the land, you have to allocate the amount that's to the building. Because that's what's depreciable. And then we would say that the date placed uh, in service, I'm going to say 010120. The cost, let's say 200,000. Uh, and then we're going to pick the method. And that would be, so I believe it's makers 27.5 uh, five straight line method that we need to use so that's residential rental uh residential rental building and so we'll keep it at that for now just to just to get an idea of this and, and just note that the cost can also kind of be a problem because again if you started using it for the business this in this period then and you bought it some time prior to this you don't really know what the cost is because you don't have the market price at this point in time so you got and you might have, have had improvements on it since the point in time that you that you made the purchase so, and you got to allocate of course between building and land because the building is going to be the part that's depreciable now you might be able to start with your property taxes statement because the property tax statement uh oftentimes will have basically that will be based on the appraisal value in some way shape or form and so you could start there and that might help you out with the allocation between uh building and land too because sometimes there's an allocation there but in any case that's going to be one of the issues, of course, with, with using the method of depreciating this item. Let's pull it over and just see where it pulls over just to get an idea of it. If we then go to the 88229, uh, there we have now the depreciation is being calculated here. So the depreciation is being calculated. And then we would have a depreciation schedule down here. So we got our depreciation schedule. Now, again, note that it does kind of complicate the sale of the home. So just realize that that could be the case if you if you you know break out the home and, and start to depreciate it and whatnot it could kind of complicate uh, the sale of the home because typically what would happen is now you're depreciating it and that would that would lower the cost or basis which could include increase the sales price uh, when you sell the home uh, which could in, result in higher taxes at that point capital gains possibly taxes or something but uh, then you also have a big exemption when you when you sell your principal residence generally so. Uh, it may not be a it may not be a problem either, but just realize that it, it adds kind of a complication <laughs> to to the the selling process or allocating or se not the process of selling, but determining what the gain uh, on the sale is. Uh, but again, it should be a big ex exemption at that point as well. So in any case, uh, the bottom line is uh, it's it's a little bit easier to allocate this out using the rental property. You might want to be using the simplified method if you are under 500 square feet because it might be a little bit a lot easier uh, to do it but you still want to be considering which method would be most beneficial for you and uh, and and take that into consideration with your decision process